Now is the time for our first panel. We're so excited to have here on this stage the big guys, the guys with the money. <laughs> so you need to listen carefully because they know what they're talking about. Chris, who are we getting on the stage? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I want to welcome uh, our special guests. Uh, and want to welcome on stage Luben Belov, Dilian Dimov, uh, Mark, and also Elvin Guri, and uh, one more time, uh, Mr. Evgeny uh, Angivov. Uh, so welcome on stage. Uh, I won't say much about you, because this is the time for you to speak. So um, I want to, because we need to put mics on you, so uh, go over there and somebody will do that for you. But before that, we'll have a, a special wall over here, so you can ask questions. Uh, this is a discussion, right? So uh, you can use your devices. Um, the only thing that you need to do is to go to uh, this address over, over there, sli.do uh, slash uh, startup. There, you can put, put in your uh, question. Uh, we moderate the questions, though, so don't try to cheat. Uh, <laughs> if you hate somebody, if you hate me about my English, or if you hate some of our speakers, sorry, guys, it might not go um, on the screen. So if you do have a, a, a question, We'll ask our special guest this question, and uh, I'll be moderating uh, this, uh, our first discussion, and hope you will enjoy it. There will be no presentations, so it will be just talks. Uh, the opposite of what we did two weeks ago. It was no talk, all action. <laughs> Start up weekend, and now we do talks. <laughs> We're almost there. So. Did you try it out on your phones? Uh, we'll, be have, uh, we'll have also a couple of mics uh, somewhere in the room, so if you uh, want to uh, personally ask a question, this will be also possible later on. But before uh, your, your questions, I want to uh, welcome our special guests and uh, want to ask them to introduce themselves, starting from Dilian. Okay. Uh is it working? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm Dilian. I'm one of the four founders of Eleven. And for the last one year, we've been investing in startups, uh, primarily in Central and Eastern Europe. We've invested about 3 million euros in about 46 companies. And just yesterday, we selected the next batch of 10, 12. We're going to find out later. So uh, just in a nutshell, that's what we do. And uh, we are accelerators, so everybody knows what an accelerator is. And that's how we do it. Okay. My turn. I'm uh, Mark Westlink, a partner of Startup Bootcamp, Amsterdam. I'm a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> I started myself 12 companies, uh, failed four times, um, and I'm now on the, the hunt for the best startups uh, in, in Europe and for our next program in Startup, um, uh, Startup Bootcamp Amsterdam, which begins in uh, March 31. And um, if you know any good startups, please connect me with uh, with, with, of course, Twitter, or maybe in the hall. Yeah? Luben. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Luben. Uh, I'm uh, one of the partners at uh, Launch Hub. Uh, we are uh, a seed fund. We invested in 25 companies. Uh, even now, we are in, uh, at the culmination of our selection process with our four, fourth batch. Uh, so maybe sometime next week, we'll have uh, a few more. And uh, prior to that, I have founded uh, the largest internet company in Bulgaria, and I have exited in 2008. And since then, I moved to the dark side. But uh, this is good uh, for the uh, community because I'm an uh, entrepreneur at heart, by heart, and uh, I try to keep uh, the our fund's uh, vision to be more in service of the entrepreneur and uh, to consider us as a partner. Well, you heard the first one. Right, <laughs> my name is Elvin. Um, I'm an implant in Bulgaria. I've been here for 20 years on and off. I started my first business when I was 19. So far, I'm three out of six or seven. So, not so bad, but not so good. Um, I have a real problem with people that associate entrepreneurship just with technology companies. Um, I hope to be able to bring that perspective to this panel. 
Thank you. Yep. Thanks for the great introduction. Uh, and uh, the theme of this discussion was what's next in funding. And uh, for those of you who don't know, like a lot of things have happened during the last year in terms of funding in Bulgaria. Uh, Launch Club and the level number emerged and uh, a lot of opportunities for us guys. And uh, yeah, I want to disclose something. I'm a little bit attached to Launch Club because they invested a in little me. bit. Yeah. How we can make it more tighter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sitting next to the Leander. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so it's been really amazing year for Launch Cup in 11, and I want to start with that. And my first question will be, uh, how many startups do you invest it in, and what's your take on the situation? Uh, uh, give us a little bit more insight on, uh, you know, how many of these startups were Bulgarian startups, and... Um, have you invested in startups from the region, and what's the, uh, what's the outcome? You've been, you know, running it for one year. I mean, Dilian and uh, Lubin, you can comment on that. You want to start? Well, we, we are very picky. Uh, we have uh, invested in 25, and out of that 25, uh, maybe uh, half of the teams are Bulgarian and uh, Bulgarians and uh, half of them are, are coming from the region. We have investments from uh, uh, geographies like uh, uh, Greece and uh, we, we have a uh, Croatian team, uh, team from uh, two teams, Ma Macedonia, Romania. Uh, soon uh, we'll have a Slovenian team as well. Uh, so, um, we have reviewed approximately uh, 1,500 applications so far, and uh, we have met with at least uh, 300 face-to-face uh, -face and in-person with at least 300 uh, founders. Uh, actually, uh, what we are focused on is uh, to, uh, to fund uh, teams that are uh, with a uh, well-rounded team with uh, complementary skills within the team and with uh, some traction. Uh, and um, actually we have, uh, we, we love all our companies, but uh, some of them are running really fast and uh, one of our companies uh, actually uh, got investment, uh, Series A investment of uh, more than two and a half million dollars uh, from uh, uh, international, uh, from a uh, European VC and uh, from uh, one of the big names in the in the uh, Silicon Valley, uh, Tim Draper, and uh, we have another team that is closing uh, their Series A uh, very soon, uh, and a uh, few more uh, to come. Some of some of our teams are already close to to break even, uh, and uh, also we are happy to to have invested in Imaga as well. Yes, Imaga, my startup. <laughs> Thanks for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dilian. <Dilea. laughs> advertising, you know, what's, the, what's so better? Uh, I'm contributing my time instead of working for Imaga, so it's worth, uh, you know, pronouncing that at least the name of and Georgi, yeah. my co-founder, is quite uh, not very happy. <laughs> I thought you were investing in teams, and this guy's running a conference. <laughs> what, what's going yeah. on? Georgi is about to hire me. <laughs> I would call for an uh, okay. advisory board meeting right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so tell us a little bit, uh, 11, and what uh, have you been doing this year, and how many startups have you invested in, and what's the situation? Uh, All right. Yeah. Both of you are in a selection uh, process right, right now. Exactly. Choosing the, the next investments, and uh, uh, it's a very special time for them, guys. So we're very lucky to have them. We actually drag them to come here, because right now we have presentations in 11 and Lounge Cup, so yeah, they choose you. Okay. Yeah, well, the thing is, we just finished yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah, so we selected them. Can you announce now? Well, uh, not really, but they're oh, announcing on. themselves. I mean, we need follow, news. Follow 11BG on okay. Twitter, and you're going to find out. I mean, these guys don't respect confidentiality agreements at all. If they don't tell, it's island mode, and they just, you know, hey, we're in, and it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, anyways, so uh, we've been active since, uh, since uh, July, more or less, last year. Our first batch joined in September. And we've been running uh, so far four regular batches. And we have a specialized games cohort where we invested in uh, a few games. So overall, we have invested in 46 teams in the last 12 months uh, as a time frame. 
which is pretty intensive, I, I must say. I mean, you should try to be on this side of the, uh, of the table. Uh, so 46 teams uh, of them, uh, two or three are now inactive. So kind of, kind of companies died, fail fast thing. Who said fail fast? Thank you. Uh, but yeah, better than failing fast is not failing at all, right? But it's also cool because uh, like th th there is some talent available, so other startups can hire these people. Yeah, and yeah, we recycle. We can yeah, recycle. Them. Recycle. That, that's a great thing, you know. Founders. <laughs> we, we call it composting. You know, okay, we put com them and then they they are even better than. Cool. So so 46. Uh, just just to wrap it up, yeah. you know, uh, they're fundraising most of them, uh, several uh, half a million to 750 thousand euro round, after our investment have been right now in process or closed. Uh, so more or less internationality, uh, all the way from Russia to the U.S. I mean founders, and then from uh, Romania all the way down to South Africa. So all over the world, we have 46 teams, about 130, 140 founders within them. Uh, and I just want to say because you know people accuse us of being not very picky, we have less than 3% graduation rate. So out of all applications that apply, we invest in less than 3%. So we are very selective. And the great news about that is there is a lot of talent in the region, and a lot of people are now embarking the path to entrepreneurship, which is just amazing. Cool. So this is exciting. And I also want to see more uh, uh, ideas for Startup Weekend, uh, applying for <coughs> you guys, and you know, getting some funding as well, because yeah, this is cool. I uh, want to move to Mark. And obviously, it's his first time he, uh, here. And most of your investments are in the Western world. And what are you looking in? Uh, why are you here? Are you looking? No, no, it's, it's, it's not true. Um, it's not. We, so we also have a, um, um, a lot of East uh, okay. European startups, also Greek startups, Australian startups, oh, cool. US startups, Canadian startups. So uh, we're uh, only focusing on the global right now. And we now are trying to connect with Mars and uh, the Moon as well, but we didn't have any, hear any back. Uh, you're so not there yet. Yeah, yet. So we're trying to. connect with flight service. Yeah, maybe, but maybe, <laughs> maybe after this they will. Send me I message. believe after this, this weekend, you might have some uh, Bulgarian startup startups lined up. I, I need to talk to you after. There, there, you're <laughs> all, always welcome to join. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've booked a meeting. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, funds are fun because they have money, but we also need a little bit of uh, support from the, the government and institutions. And that's why I want to ask Mr. Angivov. Um, he shared actually a little bit about uh, the Mr. President vision about the ecosystem, and I know you're responsible for the innovation, development, and uh, um, there. And what's your what's your take on what kind of innovation you think Bogia should focus on? Because like lots of things are uh, have been done for like focusing on uh, agriculture stuff. And do you think that <coughs> like focusing on IT would be a good idea? And how we can uh, you know reinforce that, uh, what are the tools that you have in, in, in hand? Well, uh, first of all, uh, because these guys won't say it, I really want to congratulate these two teams, you know, Eleven and, and Launch Hub, uh, because they've done an impressive job in, in a year and a half. I don't know when you launched. Was it a year and a half or less? Yeah. Almost. Something like that. Um, and, and they've really, I don't know if you felt it, but, but I've certainly been exposed to many examples where they've really energized this ecosystem. So uh, really well done to the two of you and, and all your partners and colleagues. It's only five or six people. Uh, and they're some of the hardest working people uh, I have seen lately around uh, uh, Bulgaria. So that said, I think the uh, when, when we started thinking about funding innovation, and you'll be surprised how much money the government spends on innovation and, and, and products to do with uh, entrepreneurship and so on. It's in the hundreds of millions. Um, and the shocking thing is that these guys with 20 million have created much more buzz, much more usefulness than many other tens of millions which uh, in my mind are spent unproductively. Um, and when we started uh, this whole idea, uh, nobody wanted to, to do seed funding. So everybody in the government hated, even EIF didn't want to do it, uh, especially with local management teams, you know, all the old stereotypes kept keep coming back. Um, and the fact that they've been successful, and hopefully we'll have some exits in the years to come, um, has opened up the way for many more experiments of this type, for this type of way of funding innovation. Um, and 
the, the things that I worry about, I, I think what should be innovated, it's none of the business of government. So I think this is exactly the process should, should happen as it is. There's a competitive principle, companies come um, and, they, uh, and they pick whatever they think are the best, uh, the best ideas, best themes. One of the things we try to do in, in our team is to get, uh, you know, kind of get government and the administration get out of the way of this funding. So within the, there's, an operate, there's a program at the ministry which is 1.2 billion euros, of which we took 500 million out, and we, we tried quite a risky experiment to give it to intermediaries. Some of these intermediaries are the VC funds, uh, some of the banks and so on, and it's proven to be very successful. And I, what I worry about now, and uh, something that, that Stavros was saying, you know, if, if there's anything worse than uh, picking one coin co habitation space and investing in it, what's much worse is to create a, a state-owned and managed venture capital fund, which I read about is, is an idea that is being uh, flushed around. Uh, to me, that's a huge mistake. It can never work. It has never worked anywhere. So I think I strongly feel that the way forward is to do more of these experiments. And so for the next period, why not have an engineering-focused uh, seed fund, uh, science-focused seed fund? I think um, uh, clearly it works. I think this is the way forward. And so what we have focused uh, uh, and at the moment is to try to convince the people that make these decisions today to, to not, broke, uh, not fix what's not broken. So if something is working, continue build on it. Let's not go back five or six uh, years in, in, in this kind of development. Uh, and just one other we last will, point. We will back you on that. Like the whole community will uh, definitely back you. We, will, yeah. we have so ways though. We, we, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, and it's obvious that we can go on the streets as well. So yeah. I think so. Be vocal. I mean, this is, all, uh, this is all our money, and so it has to be spent in a meaningful way. Um, and then just one last point, and then I, then I shut up, uh, uh, is, uh, is the other thing that I think is wrong and needs to get fixed is this sort of fragmentation in, in the innovation policy. So you get hundreds of instruments that are very small and insignificant. They're not coordinated. So I think... The other thing that uh, the government should do is kind of bring this to one innovation board or whatever mechanism works, where you get people like the funds, the scientists, and so on, to a little bit direct the hundreds of millions that anyway is going to get spent a little bit more productively. At the moment, it's 100% uh, or you know 95% directed by bureaucrats in, in administrations. And they're not bad people, they just don't have the competencies to make these calls. Uh, so, so that's the other big thing we're trying to, to, to work on. Thank you very much for that. And now I want to move to Elvin. And the introduction was that he's an investor, but also entrepreneur. And I believe Elvin did the biggest exit in the country or not, right? I don't know whether it was the biggest. But it was but big. One of, the big <laughs> one of these big, it was big, big exits. Right. I was part of the team that created Ted Finance International, which was the largest consumer finance company in the region between the period 2001 to 2007. It was sold to BNP Paribas, personal finance, in 2007. Okay, so I have a really simple question for you then. How are you spending this money? <laughs> Are you planning to invest in startups? What's the idea? I have invested in startups. We need your money back to the ecosystem. <laughs> so yeah, tell, tell us about your plans. I have invested in startups. I have invested in quite a few startups. Actually, one of the ideas that unfortunately didn't work related to a particular technological solution that aimed to decrease drastically the roaming charges between uh, I I when people travel abroad. And what happened in a classic technological screw-up was our people managed to get an entry to one of the largest telecoms in South Korea. They went there with the demo and everything, and the demo didn't work. As a result, the technology company failed. We did not manage to, we spent our money, but we didn't get to well, sell they our have Lots of statistics that say that like, like majority of the 
uh, tech companies fail actually. But yeah, we keep trying and you should keep trying. Yeah, go ahead, Ruben. Because I, I was listening what uh, you guys were saying and uh, I would like to, uh, to kind of uh, uh, elaborate more on that. Uh, you mentioned that uh, with uh, 11 and uh, Launch Hub, there has been change in the in the uh, whole ecosystem and environment. And uh, you asked uh, Elvin whether uh, does he invest uh, his money back into the into the community. And uh, these are uh, two very important points because what happened because I have done uh, an exit myself, and I know that. What happened with the, with the last one and a half year is that, is that we managed together to, to get a lot of co-investors putting their money back into the, into the, into the companies. And it is much uh, more easy for them to do it because there is institutional, institutional approach over there. So for them, it's much easier to put their money back into the community. And we are not just investing the money of the fund, but we are managing to get more resources put to work there for the for the. Startup. And in addition, you you guys do it in a much more professional, much more um, well informed. I would not invest in technology companies unless I knew that you guys were already doing your homeworks, for instance. Um, and going back to what Evgeny suggested earlier. I think there's such a reservoir of knowledge and skills in the country, especially in technology, with a wider definition of technology, not to include just IT, but life sciences. Um, and such potential to um, get that uh, knowledge that is being created today in the universities and transfer it into business yeah. that um, I get sometimes frustrated that it's not being explored enough. We have Bulgarian, we keep complaining about the state of the education in the country, but the truth of the matter is that there are technical universities in the country that are already outsourcing work for, uh, for some of the largest companies in the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have some, the chemical uh, uh, faculty is making a few million a year simply by doing research on behalf of some of the largest uh, uh, companies in Europe, for instance. Yeah. And this is knowledge that uh, we are not able to tap, as private investors, but and we need the help of funds such as yourself to be able to, you know, invest in them. Yeah, it's all about entrepreneurial thinking. Exactly. And, and they already teach that on the university in Holland. Still, a, a few, but still not 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 that uh, impressive. The entrepreneurial thinking is taught by professors. Sorry. Uh, uh, okay. And uh, what we do more, what we want to do more, is also adding a lot of entrepreneurial thinking to the universities and not only in Amsterdam but also uh, throughout Europe and uh, I think that's the, 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 the major uh, part yeah, of it's a, a, a big step because uh, we were <coughs> not we have not been able to really involve the universities in in the ecosystem and and we believe this is like uh, quite an important role to do uh, tasks to do and we hope we have an um, a panel session in the afternoon about uh, startup education. We'll touch base on, mm -hmm. on that team as well. And uh, yeah, um, I hope like lots of things are missing uh, in the ecosystem here in uh, Bulgaria. Let's focus on what is good then. Yeah, eh? but the good thing is we start speaking about it. We uh, identify problems that we, we really want to address. Okay, we have two funds now. There is a matching mechanism uh, rolling out. There is another, uh, like Nevek is closing. Um, their second funding uh, window as well. Uh, there's also uh, uh, money from uh, Europe are also available. Uh, like, uh yeah, but the, don't. I'm a little bit afraid that we're talking about t too much uh, about funding. It's not about funding. It's about execution, guys. If we all funding, funding, funding. Yeah, I don't give a shit about funding. Okay, it's 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 nice, but on the end, we have to succeed in the execution part, and that's where a lot of accelerators are not focusing on. Funding here, you have a bunch of money, and then bye bye. And we believe in not only uh, the, the acceleration part, but also keep involved after the program during the execution phase. Because the most important part of any startup is the execution part. And that's why many fail. We have a big fan over there. <laughs> Who there? Okay. You can have a You're totally right. I can, I can second that. You're totally right, that but we're excited about your money, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> True, but they're all funding, funding, funding. I know. Funding, I mean, this is why we call the whole conference, conference next, 
Because yeah. uh, as, I, as I usually pitch it, okay, we have some, uh, you know, like a small community, and this is obvious that we have something. We have uh, funding opportunities now, and, you know, other uh, companies from the region come and get uh, money over here, but this is not the end of the story. That's why we call it the next. Because after you get the money, you need to do something with it, yeah. right? And uh, you need to reach out and figure out what are, where are your customers and stuff. I'm not going to preach now because you need to speak. But yeah, this is the, ho the whole idea. And um, I believe that like, there will be enough uh, wisdom and knowledge how to spend this money. And it's uh, a process. Yeah. Uh, and especially here in, uh, in the region, uh, because we, we don't have like a lot of um, tradition, uh, you know, utilizing this kind of in investment, this is kind of a challenge. Is, uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. I'm not going to speak anymore about this, but yeah. Can, can you just yeah, tell sure. me about the money and stuff? I mean, I, I fully agree it's not important from that perspective and execution is the king, but uh, we must all and realize that we are talking about first time entrepreneurs in, yeah. in that yeah. region. Yeah. So there are not people that just sold their companies for a few million bucks yeah. and they have a lot of free time on their hands yeah. so they have nothing better to do. So yeah. I mean, my take on funding is it buys these guys time to quit their jobs, focus on they, what they do and then be able to do exactly what you said, yeah. execute. Yeah. But also give them a toolkit. I'm not saying what they have Fully to do, agree. but give them a proper toolkit yeah. that they can use for the execution part. And in, in acceleration, many acceleration, uh, accelerators in, in, in the world right now, because I think there's a bubble going on, yeah? Uh, because uh, the I, I saw on F6S uh, uh, lately that it's about 4,000 different accelerator programs. Holy mac. Yeah. 4,000. They, they cheat. And, they and cheat. There is, it's a farmer with 4, a shed. 4,000 different application yeah, it's, forms. It's a farmer with a shed. It's you never home. work on your product. <laughs> <laughs> you fill in forms. Uh, so <laughs> and, and I think that the accelerators need to uh, focus during the acceleration period to give them proper toolkits and then help them also in the first year for the, uh, for the execution part. We're going to have Jordan later to speak right now. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. The future of funding, right? Yeah. Post accelerator. Oh, how do you scale? Sorry. Yeah. So post accelerator, how do you scale that support, that execution support, right? Yeah. So the one thing I found when I started investing as an angel investor was once my portfolio got to around about eight, nine companies, yeah. and we have to build a portfolio because you know at the high risk stage, you, you're gonna need like twenty where you know one will win and to pay for the other nineteen failures, right? Yeah. yeah. But when it got to about eight to 10, I physically ran out of time working. I didn't have enough resources between me and my uh, other investors yeah. to work with my portfolio company. Yeah. So the question this is, you've got, you're pumping through tens, 40, 50, 100, you know, ex companies through accelerator programs, yeah. and you want to help them post. How do you scale that execution support? So I just had a look at the latest stats. Um, we have 124 teams right now. Um, um, over 70% is funded, and the total valuation of all the companies are more than 100 million uh, euros. So those are uh, quite um, impressive figures. And what we do is we connect startups with each other. That's it. Because they are all, so the, the, the first year, and the second year, and the third year, they can learn from each other. So the only thing I do, and we do, is leverage that. So connect them with each other. A lot of alumni are also the, the mentors of the new ones. So they can learn tremendously and also uh, prevent them to make the same mistakes. So what we do, just leverage, leveraging out our alumni portfolio and then things starting to happen automatically. Do you have a whole back end system like Y Combinator and 500? Yeah, that's why I wanted to, wanted to see the latest stats uh, uh, okay, about so all. What I asked was, do you have a back-end system like Y Combinator and 500? Yeah, and because, uh, uh, and, and that back-end system is only accessible, of course, uh, uh, through, uh, by our alumni, and they can learn tremendously from each other. We have a, a, a lot of uh, templates, which are made, financial templates, uh, 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 legal templates, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and also uh, um, um, uh, profiles of, 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 of people, because on the end, what, what most uh, accounts, and I saw already, question uh, 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 on Twitter is it's not the product, it's the team. Because you have a very, very good idea and a shitty team, you'll never ever succeed. But if you have a product and you have an excellent team, which is also able to uh, execute uh, excellent, 
then you have a, then you have a winner. So the first hires of any startup are the most, most, most important ones. Stavros already met, yeah? The, the, the pirate team is the most important one. Getting the, the guys on board. I'm very happy that I don't have to invest in 124 teams. But how we solve this problem is, uh, and it's somehow connected with uh, one of the questions that I see there, and somehow connected with what, what the Gemi said. We try to specialize, and we have three very precise directions and uh, expertise that we want to build within the team, and we invest in such teams. So we, we are at, um, at tech heavy. Uh, in our investments, we have three investments in the education so far, and this is also somehow connected with the questions. We are uh, very much into the entertainment and video and all this kind of stuff, and we are in the dev tools and uh, software uh, and, and enterprise software, <laughs> mostly, because, mostly because in all these three uh, uh, spaces, uh, there is enough uh, support and enough partners and enough mentors and enough co-investors that could step us together, uh, step together with us into these companies. Mm -hmm. So it's more or less one, one way is to kind of teams help each other, but the other one is what kind of an external, uh, okay. external help you can put there and what kind of expertise you have yeah. inside. Because for me, it's much easier to have a look at the entertainment business or video or yeah. anything like that. And I'm, I'm much more prepared to be helpful there. So I need less time there in order to be in, in, the, in the business. So that, is, that, is, uh, yeah. that is our. So we invest in less teams. We try to be more focused on that teams. And we try to help the teams with the expertise and the network. Yeah. So that is, that is our leverage and that we that's try to, to totally true but <coughs> what, what we uh, what we invent or that's why we uh, invented or not invented of course verticals because we in, in Amsterdam we do run two programs a horizontal program so everybody can, can come aboard and a vertical program this this year we're organizing an NFC in contactless I already saw on, on the graph on the graph that NFC is a little bit out of out of date right now yeah. uh, uh, because and you connect the the, the right mentors uh, looking for the right mentors and connect with the right startups and that's why we also do uh, uh, verticals in different cities. Because luckily we don't um, uh, do all the 124 startups in Amsterdam because it was ooh, quite crowded. Uh, it's done by, of course, all the eight cities uh, throughout Europe. So, uh, but uh, it's really important to find the right mentors and to find knowledge, uh, find the right knowledge within the team who can help uh, the startups on a cer certain uh, topic to add to the, with the execution. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, I want to, because we have 10 more minutes, I want to open up for questions from the, for the audience. And we have some on the, our Twitter wall. And also the subject was like, what's next? So what, uh, what are you guys planning? And probably you can uh, speak about it during, when you answer some of the questions. And I see that uh, on the top of, uh, over there was like uh, uh, interesting questions. One of the crazy the stuff you have invested so far. Uh, a vibrator uh, which can uh, be uh, uh, by phone. So you can text your uh, SMS or text SMS uh, message your girlfriend and the vibrator goes off. That's the most funniest part. Okay. What about you, Dilian? Uh, I don't know, we, 46 is different to define which is crazy, but I really like the guys from Playground Energy, okay. which make kids swings for playgrounds that generate okay. electricity and they blink and they flash and those stuff, so they're very interactive. So gamifying the, the playground, mm -hmm. it's really interesting. Well, we don't invest in crazy things. <laughs> <laughs> we are so boring. We are here to help great teams make money and uh, make money for our IOP as well. So uh, maybe uh, we, uh, the craziest things uh, as perceived could be uh, that we invested in a couple of or three or four companies that are tackling really, really big problems and are trying to, to uh, get uh, head to head uh, with the big guys uh, for instance uh, uh, who can who can help uh, organize all the uh, billions of pictures 
who can uh, change the uh, storage industry, who can change the entertainment industry. So all the three are very challenging and very hard uh, problems. So I would say we, we invest in, in teams that are trying to solve this kind of big problems out of, out of this, this country and this region. Elevator pitches don't work for investors. <laughs> we need to give them one minute to answer. <laughs> and cut the mic. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, after that you clap and yeah. <laughs> Let's see if they can do that. Uh, okay, Evgeny, if you're an investor, what, was, what would be the, the craziest idea that, you, that you're willing to invest? <laughs> oh, well, that's, uh, it, it's easy to answer a hypothetical question if you don't invest. So, uh, well, I'm looking at a bunch of startups now, mostly around what these guys are doing. And uh, my, my training is as a banker, so I'm not the most natural VC investor. Uh, so I also see, they see lots of problems. So, uh, but, I, but I think what we're seeing is that increasingly the quality of the teams is getting much better, even since their first uh, rounds. Uh, there's five or six companies that are already getting traction in Silicon Valley, lots of support from these guys. And, um, and I've surprised myself. In fact, I've invested in three so far, not huge amounts of money. But uh, so we'll see which is the craziest at the end or whether I'm just going to be crazy and lose everything. But, but what I think, uh, if I can ask you other question, what's next in funding? Uh, I tell you what I think should be next. We should create uh, several more verticals along the lines that were discussed here. So they've naturally specialized in different things. We should create, I think, other funds with different expertise so that first there is competition in the pool, second that people that don't necessarily do media or, or something that these guys are, are familiar with uh, have a source of funding. And you know, I, I come back again to my current favorite topic. Would you rather have another five or six funds running this way or, or one government-sponsored fund of 100 million uh, that you have to go and apply for funding? And, and, uh, and I think it's, it's a kind of a, it's a fundamental decision that needs to be made which way to go. And you have a lot of influence. So, you know, don't, uh, if you have, a sp if you have a, an idea or you have a strong feeling of how it should be happen, you should make that known. Pressure, pressure the politicians and the policy makers. Yeah. It's all about passion. Yeah, sure. uh, like the Sofia Tech Park is kind of the startup of the, um, the president institution, so we want to see it happen actually. And well, it, it's, we would love to see it happen. It's a controversial idea because it can be extremely successful or it can be a total flop. And uh, in order for it it's to be... It's just a real estate project that will be... Well, I don't think that's failing. true. And, and when we started it, it was exactly the idea to sponsor things like this. It, it's really to provide the, the, the space for the ecosystem to, to pay things that private sponsor cannot yet pay. We don't have the system as you have in, in, in Western Europe or in, in Silicon Valley or elsewhere. So the idea was to complement what is already happening. And, um, and, and I think it has a very big chance of success if uh, you know, people don't keep messing up with it. You know, because th this is the thing. There's a lot of interference in big infrastructure state projects. And, uh, but I think so far so good. Uh, the commission is on board, and I'm actually I'm very optimistic about it. Yeah, but we're I'm also optimistic, but like there are lots of uh, other countries that are doing something like that, like in Long Jazz or Tech City. I believe in Tel Aviv there is lots of uh, things going on as well. But, uh, so yeah, we probably need to learn a little bit from these places and yeah, see how what worked and what didn't, and you know, kind of you know, learning the process. I'm not going to you know <laughs> give you advice, but this is like what I feel. <laughs> But I also want to add, because uh, 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 we are start looking, we don't have any, except, except any public money. It's mm -hmm. all private funded. Because all our sponsors, or partners, as you, yeah. as you mentioned, are all corporates and angel investors. And I believe in more like an ecosystem like that. Uh, because if, if FIFA com, uh, wants to, uh, is, is able to invest like a conference like this, they are also able to uh, uh, well, uh, fund an accelerator program like, like uh, Launchup or Eleven. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a, 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 an add uh, more commercial money to this as well. And, and even uh, angel uh, investors that, that uh, uh, 
invest directly into the program, and of course afterwards also in the startups which come out of the program. So maybe you can try that angle as well. No, I, I mean generally I think you're absolutely right. And the question is, do you have yet critical mass here? And so and this is the yeah. question about yeah. Bulgaria. Yeah. It's and starting. Yeah. And if uh, a project like this is to be successful, as soon as possible, uh, the operation, the running of it, has to be outsourced to private companies. So even at the outset, we we're saying this, this park needs to be managed by, uh, th there's a dozen of companies like this in the world that manage several centers and so on. Mm -hmm. So it, it, as soon as possible, you should get the state out of it because yeah. it will get, they'll fuck it up, basically. I think yeah. as soon as, you know, as soon as the first initial stages, the money is spent, the infrastructure is in place, you have to pull out, yeah. otherwise it will die. Yeah. Facilitator. Okay, we have one more minute, two more minutes, and I want to ask Alvin to answer this popular question over there. What are yeah. the top three must-haves in a startup in order for you to invest? Have you thought about it? I, I'm sure you have an answer. I'd say the team dynamics are the most important. Yeah. I would, uh, there's not three things, but a combination of team dynamics and I think a good idea. I focus more on the team dynamics because most of the proposals that I see are not a single person, are a team. And I'd like to find out more about how they work together, more importantly, how they address and resolve a conflict. If a team does not have a conflict resolution mechanism, in other words, if they have a disagreement how they solve it, then, uh, then I don't like it, I don't invest in it. Yeah. I would say team, market, product. So what about the rest? For me, uh, I always say uh, team comes first. So what we see, uh, what we would like to see in the team is uh, domain expertise, uh, complementary skills, and commitment. Yeah, somebody said it's uh, five things, team, 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 market, and idea, but the idea doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so True. guys, basically the idea doesn't matter. You need to find <laughs> cool guys, <laughs> it, it, dress up, yeah. and show it at 11. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your time. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, we managed to answer your questions. Now we're having a, a coffee break. We have some coffee and water for you. And please return for the next uh, keynote after the break. It, it will be like 30 minutes.